Between 1958 and 1961, France did something absolutely horrible. France made the Francophone African countries, and I don't even want to use that terminology, but I only use it for the purposes of conversation. The 14 countries which were former colonized, formerly but still colonized by the French, they were forced to sign a document that they called the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. You heard me. The Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. If you want your independence, you must sign this. Guinea, Secretary said, absolutely not. Mali said, absolutely not. France, pack your bags and go on back home. France could not believe it could not understand that an African country, these monkeys do not want to be affiliated to France. They said, we will show you. So history tells us France went into those two countries, took everything that they thought they had brought to those two countries, including the last teaspoon and chair, proceeded to pour concrete into the sewage pipes, completely devastating the two economies. The then newly appointed president of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah, in his efforts to rescue these two economies, created the first ever union of any African states, Ghana, Guinea, and Mali. But what that did was it made the other African countries realize that if they go against France, this was the fate that was waiting them. So what did they do? Wait the pact. And they signed. What did the pact say? One. The pact said, you monkeys, you don't know how to manage your money. So you shall deposit 85% of your bank reserves with the French Central Bank under the control of the French Minister of Finance. And that France is going to take your deposits from the individual countries, pull them together, invest them in the French stock market under the French name. And you, monkeys, you may or may not know the returns. Latest figures are showing this is still going on since 1958. France today is collecting out of Africa over $500 billion before investing. And when they finish investing this money, for every $14 billion out of Africa, they're recognizing over $300 billion. Now do the math. So when it's actually said and done, France is taking out of Africa trillions of dollars every year, and we, the poor Africans, are gladly giving it to France. And the same France has the audacity to look at us and call us poor people. 1958. They went further with the pact. You see, we will also print your own money. We will print your money for you. They instituted what they were calling the CFA, Special currency for the African countries, and that only France can print that money for you. They went on to say all the contracts, large contracts, public and private, French companies have the first right of refusal. All your minerals discovered, yet to be discovered, France has the first right of refusal. Now, my brothers and sisters, if one of you was to wake up one morning and you're president of one of those countries, and your chief of staff walks in first day and starts reading you out the do's and don'ts as stipulated by the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. What power do you have? None. And the same countries that are stealing from Africa, they have the audacity to look at Africa and say, ah, African, what's wrong with you? Why, are you, why can't you all take care of yourselves? Well, let's start by leaving our $500 billion on the continent. But what they do instead, they want to throw you with a smoke screen. Your African leaders are corrupt. Well, you know, I gave you that. I mean, not all African leaders are corrupt. Africa is a family. No family is complete without crazy Aunt Sally and crazy Uncle Tom. <laughs> Nobody is perfect. Okay, fine, so I'll give you that. Their own figures are saying 50 billion is getting out of Africa from corruption. Fine, I give you that. 
but you do not want me to engage in a conversation that's solely limited to the $50 billion out of Africa through corruption. First, you don't tell me where it's going. You simply tell me it's getting out of Africa. But secondly, there's a bigger thief. You got two thieves, one with a briefcase with 50 billion and the other thief with a briefcase with 500 billion. I am a smart woman. Do you want me to ignore the one with 500 billion and put all my energies on a suitcase with 50? And by the time the one with 500 billion is done investing, we are talking trillions. Now, do you see how quickly the funds out of Africa from corruption become the larger chunk under the table? And they want you to stay under the table. So you never have to talk about what is on the table. We must wake up, Africans. We must think about our situations. How did we get here? Are we willing to let France come?